Hey Lighthouse, it's a joy to come to you today through this video message. For those who do not know us, my name is Pastor Godfrey. My wife Carolyn and I have been serving here in Ghana for the past six years. Prior to moving to Ghana, I had the honor of serving as an associate pastor at Lighthouse for seven years. Hallelujah. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to my friend, Pastor Tim, and his entire team at Lighthouse Christian Church. Hey, God bless you guys all. Keep up the God work. Also, a shout out to my brothers-in-law, um, Mark Grohl, David Grohl, and your families. God bless you all. Um, the borders here in Ghana had been shut for going on uh, actually over four months now. And um, Carol and my wife has been trying to get over to the States for some time now. So thankfully, yesterday, um, the American Embassy was able to arrange a flight um, to take um, citizens that were willing to go. So my wife, Carolyn, and the kids are on, actually they're on, on route right now, heading towards you guys. They are looking forward to seeing you guys. Um, God bless you all. Hey, I'm, I'm so excited about a message that I want to share today. Um, I have entitled it, It's Time to Rebuild. It's Time to Rebuild. Uh, before I jump into it, um, how about we bow our heads and pray. God, we thank you and bless you. We honor you. We worship you. God, your word says, the entrance of your word gives us light. We pray that you will give us light today as we hear your word. Give us the marching orders. Give us, give us what we need to be the best that you've created us to be. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, um, as a way of introduction, I just wanted to say 2020 has been a dramatic year. Um, I actually heard someone say, um, I'm going to bed. Wake me up when 2020 is over. <laughs> um, 2020 has actually exposed a lot of cracks in, in, in foundations. Um, I read months ago um, a headline that said um, divorce rate has spiked um, during the lockdown. You know, we people are busy, we are all busy, and during the lockdown when you actually have to stare your spouse um, in the face, all of a sudden you realize, um, I, I really don't like this person. So, so, so the, the pandemic has exposed a lot of cracks. And, 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 and basically, basically, that's what I want to talk about. It's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild. Um, but I just want to mention this before um, we, we move forward. Um, here in Ghana, the, the main sport is soccer. And studies have proven that more points, more goals are scored in the second half than in the first half. The first half is the time for um, teams to size out, um, size up their up opponents. Then in the second half, when fatigue has set in, the better team ends up scoring more goals and end up winning. The, 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 the game. So what am I trying to say? Basically, my point is, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. 2020 is not over. We still have six more months to go. And can I tell you, if it took God six days to create this universe, six months is a lot of time for him to do whatever he wants to do in your life. And the Bible says his plan for you is a good plan. Hallelujah. So it's good. It's good. Um, my, my goal is hopefully um, this message will, will encourage you to, to rebuild again. 
I've, my my text. I'm going to be taking my text from the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. Um, just a backstory um, about the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was living in captivity in Babylon. In those days, Babylon was a superpower. Babylon um, had conquered Judah and taken captives to Babylon. Let's fast forward a little bit. Later, a stronger nation overcame Babylon and they were the Persian nation. So at this point in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was under the Persian rulership. And he was under a king by the name of Artaxerxes, or just Xerxes. Nehemiah is believed not to have been um, um, a captive, a, a direct captive, but maybe a grandson of a captive who had been brought into um, Babylon years ago, years ago. So at this point, Nehemiah had received a message from family members who had visited Judah. And when they returned, they brought a report and they said, uh, the walls of Jerusalem had fallen down. They hadn't been rebuilt. In other words, Jerusalem was defenseless. J Jerusalem was vulnerable. The people were in shame. And, and, and this news grieved Nehemiah. And the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah decided to pray about it. He fasted and prayed. So we are now going to jump into chapter 2 of Nehemiah. In chapter 2 of Nehemiah, um, Nehemiah was before the king. So I'm going to read in verse 1. The Bible says, in the month of Nisan, in the... 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the cup and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This will be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruins and its gates have not and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. So basically, Nehemiah said, send me. I want to go. I want to go and rebuild that fallen wall. And the king gave him the marching orders to go and rebuild. So that's what I want to talk about today. How do we rebuild? I'm going to be sharing six points. Of how to rebuild and and the first point I want us to look at is the first thing to do in rebuilding is to do assessment the first thing to do is to have an assessment you need to assess relationships um, like I said, the report I read, um, divorce had spiked. Um, um, but if they had assessed relationships prior to the pandemic, they would have been able to withstand the storm. So, so we need to have frequent assessments in our lives. So we need to assess our relationships. We need to assess our finances, our career, our, our, our school schooling. So, so there are different areas that we need to assess ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, are my processes obsolete? Um, am, I, am I obsolete? 
Do I need an upgrade? Do I need to add value to myself? What needs to change for me to move forward? Um, these are hard questions that we need to ask ourselves. And that is having an assessment. Um, I'm, I'm going to read Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, how Nehemiah assessed the problem that he was facing. Um, remember, in, in that time, the broken down wall, the, everything being in disarray is, is, is similar to what we are going through in our world today. Um, um, it seems like um, things are, are, are falling apart all around us. Um, but it's the same strategy that Nehemiah used that we can use to see um, victory in our lives. So, Nehemiah chapter 2, I'm going to be reading from verse 11, um, 12 and 13. The Bible says, I set out during the night with a few men. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were, there were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. By night, I went out through the valley gate towards the jackal well and the dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem. That's the word, examining the walls of Jerusalem. Examining is an assessment that he was doing, which had been broken down, and its gate, which had been destroyed by fire. So when Nehemiah went to rebuild the walls that had fallen down, the first thing he did was to have an assessment done. He had to assess the problem to find out the strategy that he needs in rebuilding. Amen. Amen. The second point I would like us to consider is to take a step. <laughs> we need to take that step. It's very easy to procrastinate. It's very easy to say, you know what, I need to put all the ducks in a row um, before I take that step. Obviously, absolutely, do your due diligence, but you need to take a step. I love what Pastor Richard Barkin um, used to say, and maybe he still says that. He says, God cannot stir a vehicle that is not in motion. God cannot steer a vehicle that is not in motion. You have to be in motion for God to, to, to steer you around. So, so we have to take that step. And, and, and I just want to read um, once again Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11 and verse 12. Um, the Bible says, I went to Jerusalem, Nehemiah said, and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few men. So he took a step. He was there for three days. And he said, I'm taking a step. I'm taking a step. He took a step and went into the heart of Jerusalem to assess the problem at stake. So, so don't, don't procrastinate. Take that step. Nehemiah stepped out in faith and did a survey and started building. And that's what um, Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 1 tells us. The Bible says, Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priest went to work and rebuilt the ship gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated, and as far as the Tower of Hananiel. Why Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 1 is very important is, the sheep gate is the gate in which sacrifices were brought in to offer to God. So the first construction project they did was the sheep gate. 
In other words, they put God first in the project. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to step out in faith, but yet we have to make sure God is first. Amen. We have to make sure we are being led by God. We have to make sure we put God at his rightful place, which is the first. Amen. Amen. The third point I'd like to share is break your vision into bite-sized pieces. <laughs> break your vision into bite-sized pieces. That is what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah had no idea how long this project was going to take. But he realized, you know, let's get started. Let's get started. We need all hands on deck. Can I tell you, you will be discouraged if you want to tackle all at once. The sheer volume of your to-do list can discourage you. <laughs> uh, one thing you will observe when you come to Ghana is there's a lot of unfinished buildings around. The reason being, maybe you, 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 you take your dream house to an architect and, and after the project is drawn on paper, and after doing all your assessment and your, your cost evaluations, you realize my dream house is going to cost maybe, this is just an example, maybe $200,000. You don't have that money. That's a lot of money. And Ghana doesn't have the mortgage system like it is in the U.S. So in other words, most people, let's Take, for instance, they have $1,000 on them. They throw $1,000 at the project. A month later, or months later, when they have something else, they keep throwing little bits at the project. And, and, and after a number of years, the project may be completed. So in other words, it, it, um, um, completing a project here takes longer. It takes years to build a home. Yeah, if you build your house in two years, you've, you've actually broken a record. It usually takes over two years, some way longer to complete the project. There is no mortgage system here. So in other words, you need to break your vision into bite-sized pieces. If you don't do that, you may never take that step. You may never step out because um, the weight, the weight of 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 what is needed can discourage you, can discourage you. Dave Ramsey calls it taking baby steps. Dave Ramsey calls it letting those steps snowball into your dream, into you accomplishing what you had dreamed about. So that is the third point. My first point is be ready to recalibrate. Be ready to recalibrate. What do I mean by that? Be flexible. Be flexible. The two main enemies that always got on the case of Nehemiah and the Jews were Sambalat and Tobiah. This, this, these enemies always got on their case. There was a time that... Um, um, Nehemiah had to recalibrate. Nehemiah had to work with one hand and had weapon in another hand. That is, that is being flexible. Can I tell you, um, um, in life, um, a curveball may come in. Things may happen that you may need to re re. Calculate, <laughs> recalculate. I love, I love the GPS system in your vehicle. When, when, when you're driving and you take the wrong turn, you hear a voice that says, recalculating, recalculating. And, 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 that's, and that's how life is. There, there are times where you may, you, may, you may get off on the wrong exit. There, there are times where you may, you, may, you may make the wrong turn, but it doesn't mean you just throw in a towel and give up. But you have to recalculate, recalculate. And that's what Nehemiah did. Um, um, Nehemiah wasn't rigid. So, so how about let's just read about it. Um, 
Nehemiah chapter 4. Let me read verse 7 um, to 9, just to give you an idea of the enemy they faced. The Bible says in verse 7, Nehemiah 4 verse 7, But when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the men of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God, Jeremiah, uh, I'm sorry, Nehemiah said, and we posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Verse 16, the Bible says of Nehemiah 4.16 says, From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah. That is being flexible. That is recalibrating. When you realize the route I'm taking is not leading me to my expected goal. The fifth point, the fifth point I want to talk about is be persistent. Be persistent. The fact that you are facing opposition doesn't mean God's hand is not in it. <laughs> the fact that you face opposition doesn't mean God's hand is not in it. What, um, what surprises me in Scripture is when God had promised the Israelites, He said, I'm giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. It's called a promised land. But you know, they had to fight enemies in, in, in getting that land. That is, that is life here on this side of heaven. Uh, we have to, life is a battle. You see, life is a battle. And we have to be persistent. We have to be persistent. And that is what Nehemiah did. It was easy for Nehemiah to say, there are enemies coming up, uh, after me. Is, is this really God? Did God actually tell me to do it? Yes, he did. Yes, God did. There are oppositions that will come, but God will fight your battles. Amen. God will fight your battles. What this opposition does for you and I is it helps build our faith. It helps us depend and rely on God each day. Amen. Amen. One thing I love about this story of Nehemiah rebuilding also is... Um, None of them were experts. Um, if you read, priests were building, perfume makers were building, um, um, father, fathers with daughters were building. That is the way it is. You see, um, um, as, as, as long as we are persistent, we are willing, we can accomplish the task. The good news is, in 52 days, they had completed rebuilding a wall that had been broken for years for years and it takes being persistent persistent the sixth point my sixth and final point is surround yourself with the right type of people this is very important surround yourself with the right team with the right team um Avoid people who will give you a hundred and one reasons why it will not work. It will not work. What I love about Joshua and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb saw the same thing that um, the other ten spies saw. They saw giants in the land, but Joshua and Caleb said, let's go for it. Let's go do it. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. That is the attitude you need to surround yourself with with surround yourself with people who who will say let's do it i loved it um, um nehemiah had that and and this was key to his success nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18 the bible says i also told them about the gracious hand 
of my God upon me. And what the king had said to me, they replied, they replied, let us, let us start rebuilding. After Nehemiah had come and told them about, you know, this is my heart desire, this is what I want to do. After them, they, they said, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. You need to surround yourself with a good team. And that's my prayer for you. That God will bring along people who are helpers. People who have the grace to stand alongside you to accomplish what God has called you to do. Be persistent. Keep going. Keep going. COVID, COVID is not the end of it. COVID is not the end of the world. And God is with you. Keep, keep, keep doing the will of the master until he comes. Amen. Jesus says, occupy till I come. We have to be faithful. We have to, we have to keep doing God work. And what I'm preaching to you, I'm applying it to the mission work we are doing here. We have to keep going. We have to keep fighting irrespective of, of, of the opposition that we face. The name of the Lord has to be declared. Hallelujah. Keep going. Let me conclude with this verse um, in Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. I'm going to read verse 17, 18, and 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, the Bible says, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Hallelujah. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. Amen. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you that um, may God be with you. May God cause all your dreams, your passions, May he bring them to fruition. May, may God guide you. May you live faithfully for God. May you, may you accomplish the purpose for which he created you. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for our church family in the U.S., um, Lighthouse Christian Church. Thank you for the great history there. Thank you for the blessing that is upon um, um, the the church. I'm reminded of what Solomon prayed when he dedicated the temple. He says, anyone that comes in, whatever need they have, when they pray to you, God, may you hear them. God, may you hear your people. Oh God, may you walk with them. Anyone that needs forgiveness, may you grant them forgiveness. God, anyone that needs healing in their bodies, God, may you dispense health. To them in the name of Jesus. Those who are in, 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 in a crossroads with their career, may you lead them, oh God. May you show them what you have in store for them. Those who are contemplating ministry, oh God, may you lead them. Your word says the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. God, give them the grace to fulfill the, the reason for which you created them. God bless Lighthouse. Be with everyone who is listening right now. May you guide and protect them. Thank you for hearing our prayers, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you all. We love you. And thank you. We are, we are an extension of, of, of you guys here in Ghana. God bless you all. Bye.